There are several JRPGs out there that were ruined for me, but because of more than one thing. Games that I've strongly criticized in the past, of course. Others, however, were ruined by one. Just one simple thing. And today, I'll show them to you all. So let's begin. Number 10. Dragon Guard. Many, many years ago when I tried this action RPG, I thought its combat would be a common complaint. However, over time I've noticed that I belong to a minority, to my surprise. Sure, even most of its fans agree the controls are clunky, but they don't seem to mind. Perhaps because the story, the setting and the characters in this game are dark, edgy and messed up. And that's just the way I like it actually. So it's still worth playing because of its story, right? Well, maybe for you, cause I sure can't stand those same clunky controls I mentioned. Combat in Drakengard is so stiff that its heat detection just feels way out of place. The camera does not help sometimes, but it can be handled or forgiven if controls were more intuitive. It just has terrible fighting in my opinion, but that's about it. I believe the rest is just fine, and I know I'm missing out on a great story which is totally my kind of jam. Too bad I don't care much because I believe an action game with bad controls during battle is pretty much worthless. The most important thing in a game of this genre? Completely ruined. Number 9. Fantasy Star 2 I've never played the original Master System version, only its gazillion ports on all those Sega collections. Not a single one of them, however, fixes this game's major problem. It's a retro RPG, so I can live with the fact that you have to grind from the start, or that you have to walk to everywhere and anywhere. Some spikes are there, but this is a challenging RPG from 1989, so it's understandable. What isn't and ruins the whole game for me is its insane level of cryptiness. Where the heck do I go? Fantasy Star 2 is full of labyrinthous dungeons where it's never been easier to get lost. Traversing places like this is annoying with random encounters, but in this game the frustration feels multiplied. Original Genesis copies were sold with a walkthrough precisely to help the player from the tyrannical sociopath who developed these areas. Nowadays we have the internet, but I just don't want to play the game while reading a guide the entire time. It's not fun, it's too difficult, it's annoying and extremely outdated. Imagine a modern remake of this game, that'll be awesome, as long as they keep it turn-based, of course. Number 8. Infinite Space Infinite Space is one of the most boring JRPGs I've played in my life, but it's boring for one thing, one simple thing, its battle system. See, everything else is fantastic here. You've got a story driven by political and emotional drama with some dark twists and character progression. By that I mean time passes and you see different arcs to the plot where the characters get older. It's also a spaceship simulator which means you'll be in charge of entire crews organizing and customizing your ship. Sadly though, you use that very same ship to fight in a slow, convoluted and outdated combat. To date, I still can't even explain how it works because I never properly understood it. All I did was choose commands until I either succeeded or died pathetically. It's supposed to be played in turns but on real time while the enemy ship moves around. There's some cooldown to some abilities or something like that. You also have to build up their bars or something like that. <sighs> yeah, I know, I'm doing a terrible job explaining it, huh? Some diehard fan will definitely explain it better in the comments. Me, I'm not even trying as you can tell, even talking about this game bores me to pieces! Number 7. Vandal Hearts 2 an indirect sequel to the excellent game we got also on the PS1. Story still tragic, dark, and it was actually almost censored in North America for its brutal prologue. I really, really wanted to like this game because I thought the story and character progression were badass. Interesting as it strikes though, Konami came up with a twisted change to the battle system. And that is the thing that ruined Vandal Hearts 2 and nearly killed the series. Well, it died after a PS3 digital game, but whatever, you get the idea. Well, in this beautifully ruined tactical RPG, if you move, 
the enemy moves. Yeah, kind of like in a roguelike RPG. You select one character's action and when they execute it, the enemy executes their own at the exact same time. That means if you targeted that enemy and it moves, you'll miss. How the hell am I supposed to strategize in this convoluted system, you ask? You can, and there are ways. I was fine for the first several missions, but I ended up turning the game off probably forever. Why? Because it's just not enjoyable. It's frustrating, you have no way of knowing what the enemy will do, so it just ruins the fun out of its combat mechanics. Number 6. Dragon Quest Swords this exclusive on the Wii was actually a great idea as a JRPG for kids. I say for kids because who else is gonna stand like a moron trying to hit the air with a Wii mode? If I was a kid, I would love to give this one a try, I'd probably never get tired of it. Except for one thing, of course. It's horribly designed hit detection! Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's really frustrating when it doesn't. I get it, they were trying to be more realistic. Monsters are just not gonna stand there, so you can kick their asses and do nothing. Problem is, I don't see them trying to dodge my attacks at all! Because that's exactly what they're doing, standing there! How in blazes am I missing most of my attacks? The Wii Motion Plus or whatever apparently came up with some quality of life improvements, but I doubt every single attack hits, because developers couldn't have given a kangaroo stinky ass if it did. So I take back what I said, with this irritating issue, I'd be tossing the controller at the screen if I was a kid, or trying to destroy the damn game with a rock band guitar! Number 5. The Caligula Effect 2 I hate the original game on the Vita. Way too many things that ruined it. I didn't even bother with its modern remaster some years later. The sequel, however, I thought it would be different and in terms of almost everything, it surprisingly was. If you don't know what this is, well, it's a turn-based RPG based on a modern setting in a high school. Your male or female silent protagonist joins a group of students with magic powers to fight some hiding demons in Tokyo. Okay, the plot is actually deeper and more complicated than that, but I wouldn't know since one thing destroyed any enjoyment whatsoever for me. The music. Sometimes it's great, that's for sure, but just like its predecessor, it's got a lot of idle content here. Big problem is that every time you enter a battle, any battle, an idol starts singing. You go around wherever you are and you constantly hear the music, which isn't that bad, but when they start singing during every freaking encounter, it just kills it for me. Sure, I could mute the music, but then I'd have silence, except for the sound effects. A turn-based RPG with no battle theme? No thanks. I found nothing else wrong with this game, so if you like constant idle singing and or don't mind it, give it a try, I guess. Number 4. Rondo of Swords There's absolutely nothing wrong with this game. It's got a decent story, interesting cast, cool music and nice graphics. It's combat, I absolutely love it one of the most unique strategy RPGs ever made. You basically go through your enemies or allies by drawing these line routes on the map. Spells are also there, and for them you don't have to draw a route. It's such a creative way to spice things up in a grid-based game like this. It's honestly excellent, and that's why it hurts to see it ruined by one thing. Rondo of Swords is just too hard. Brutally, extremely hard. It's not only a massive grind fest, it's also a gang bang of enemies in a lot of maps. You only have a maximum of 6 characters in battle against hordes of units all around. Some recruitable characters are so easy to die because they put them so far away from your party. No permadeath here, but knowing who to grind and who to keep in base is a pain in the ass. You'll never know what's waiting for you on the next map. And the only way to grind here is to repeat the most recent mission and before completing it or if things get too tough, quit the mission and return to base. I had to do that over and over and over again before some of the nastiest maps you can imagine. I love this game and usually the difficulty doesn't ruin it for me, but this one just went overboard and destroyed any enjoyment I had whatsoever. Number 5. 
Number three, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna the Golden Country. Yeah, you knew this game was gonna be here, so I'll be very quick, cause I'm tired of bitching about it. God damn it, Monolith Soft, you killed such a beautiful JRPG. It had everything to be excellent, man, everything. A great cast, a great protagonist, an improved combat, gorgeous visuals, amazing interface, badass soundtrack, and a horrible, completely unnecessary community level. You have to force yourself to do all types of repetitive, boring and tedious side quests to race it. You don't race it enough, you can't go to the final dungeon and beat the game. Oh yeah! Side content forced on the player, fetch quests forced on the player, NPC talks forced on the player. One of the most disappointing JRPGs I've played in my life. Number 2. Tales of Fantasia on the Game Boy Advance It's unbelievable and almost insulting how the only version we've ever gotten of this game is the worst of them all. And of course, here lies the one and only reason why this particular release was completely annihilated. Story, characters, pacing, music, graphics, exploration, blah blah blah, yeah it's all great, but nothing matters when combat is slow, laggy and utterly defective. I don't even need to explain it, you're seeing it right now with your own two eyes! This game is wonderful, don't take me wrong, it's just this GBA version that sucks! This sluggish attempt to keep the frame rate at a minimum makes the console look weak! It makes playing Dragon Guard the ultimate fun in action compared to this! How can Bane Dynamco screw up this bad? Alright, it isn't that bad, but it's bad. To add insult to injury, it's the very first Tales game ever made, and this relentless mediocrity is the only version released outside Japan. What were they thinking? Thank goodness for emulation and fan translation so you can play the PS1 version which is by far the best of them all. Number 1 Final Fantasy VIII Final Fantasy VIII has gathered a lot of hatred over the past few years. I always try to defend it because I think it's such a wonderful game. Yeah, wonderful until you notice too late its fatal flaw. You think I'm talking about its teenage romance drama in the story that feels like a soap opera? Nope. I wasn't the biggest fan, sure, but I liked it. You think I'm referring to the junction system? Again, not the biggest fan, but it didn't bother me that much. And no, I'm also not talking about how the game lets you abuse the GF system to summon creatures that destroy everything. This game was not ruined at all for me for any of those things. The only feature, or should I say penalty, that completely destroyed my long ass hours until the very end, yeah, the final boss, was the fact that the enemy levels up with you. I don't care too much about complex systems, convoluted mechanics or hard as hell spikes, as long as I can grind my characters. That is the only way sometimes to proceed with the story in a game with gameplay mechanics that are not too friendly. But in this goddamn game, grinding was totally useless. And I never knew that until I faced the final boss, died, leveled up everyone to level 99 and died miserably again. All because the bosses level up with you. Final Fantasy VIII was ruined for me just for that. Yeah, go to hell, Squaresoft. Alright, that's my list. Great JRPGs where nearly everything was done right, except for that one thing. So what are some JRPGs that were ruined for you by only one feature? Pretty sure you have a bunch. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!